absolutely love this character. I really love her. Well, now I have to tell you something really important. I mean, really, really important. I've been thinking really hard and I realized that our island is just a nice thing. It's a really powerful thing. It's full of your power, which makes everything green and lovely instead of demonly, demony and horrible. And I was thinking, if you close this wood wound and then send the island here, it could bring all the land back to life all at once. See? I just told you an important clever thing. Now it's your turn to tell me what a wonderful dragon I am and then we can go bite and scratch the demons. What are you going to do after we win, Ivo? Ah, the same thing that you're going to do, except for all the grown-up and boring things. I won't be doing those, and I'll be doing other interesting things that you don't want to do, but I do. Like eating a whole lake of palm jam, um, or surprising someone by powering a bucket of jam on their head. Hug, Ivo. You're my treasure. Of course I'm a treasure, it's easy for me, I'm a dragon. I'm prettier than all the sparkly things in the world, and I'm your friend too, and sparkly things can be your friends, even the really pretty ones. We should go. Yes, yes, even the world I remember, let's go. Oh, something's happening. I can see you, Sutcher. Show yourself. Sutcher appears from hiding and looks at you balefully. I have uncovered your plan. The spells in this chamber they are designed to kill you if something goes wrong. We'll be preparing for this outcome from the start. Am I right? So I have 45 and 49. Oh, intimidation has more. I'll stop you by force if necessary, so don't embarrass yourself with these pathetic attempts to prevent the inevitable. Let's say I don't destroy myself. And she's like, fine. You lock eyes with her little it is her will against yours, and you strive against her in this unspoken contest for what feels like an eternity. But finally, the crimson fire in her eyes dims, and her resolve falters. Okay, with intimidation I finished the game, I guess. Five minutes later... Arilla's eyes are full of anger and disbelief. The wound above her heart is bleeding, her shoulders are trembling, but she raises her chin definitely. It's over. Now you will die. I'm not going to sacrifice you. I'm walking away and leaving everything that it is. I'm not going to sacrifice you, Arilla. Someone requires a Zatomitic path, summon the island and step into the wound. Throughout my journey to this moment, I have protected life, goodness and freedom. And I will not stop now. I will be the living source that will heal this dying land, even if I have to pave my own life. You step into the rift, but what you feel is not fear or pain, but the lightless of a spring breeze, and answering your call, a wave of pure life of a force arrives from beyond the cursed prison walls of threshold. This wave pierces you and everything around you, filling it with life, breath, laughter. The last thing you see before you disperse in a flash of light is a beautiful garden where a demonic wasteland once was, if you want a good action. Dude, this is amazing!
Life and death, destiny and great deeds, answers to mysteries, the search for one's true path. The mind can comprehend all of these, and then such concepts can be written down as a sequence of formulas, a series of lines, a chain of thought. Still, a moment always comes when it is time to wrap up, to reach a conclusion, to put a period at the end of the last sentence. The impossible rift, the bleeding wound that had tormented all of Galarium, and <laughs> my cat wants to eat <laughs> I can never read the thing. <laughs> She's like a child. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm so cute. <laughs> Let me read the beautiful ending, cat. Come on. Life and death. That's in it. <laughs> Look at this cat. Answers to me, series. The search for one's true path. The mind can comprehend all of these. And then such concepts can be written down as a sequence of formulas, a series of lines, a chain of thought. <laughs> Even moment always comes when it is time to wrap up, to reach a conclusion, to put a period at the end of the last sentence. The impossible rift, the bleeding wounds that had tormented all of Galarian for a hundred years, was finally healed. <laughs> this cat, look at this. <laughs> The great deed demanded a great sacrifice, the life of the one known as the commander of the Fifth Crusade. His cause and his death shook minds and souls not just on Galarian and in the Abyss, but on the other planes as well, and even the halls of the gods. Malone perished, but shortly after his followers were all visited by the same dream. The goddess Desna, tears falling from her eyes, carried a ravaged soul in her hands. Then a tiny spark appeared within the soul and she placed it in the night sky. That night, a new star really did appear in the skies over Galarion, and it was named after the commander. It is not always visible, but should the traveler get lost in a blizzard or a ship run into a fog bank near a dangerous reef, the star will miraculously wink into existence, eliminating the path to safety. The wind of Elysium became a harbinger of renewal for the lands of the former wound. The corruption-torn wastes became lush once more, and where lava lakes once steamed, there grew groves of towering trees. Some of the vegetation seemed to have come straight from a dream. This rejuvenated land became a beautiful garden and inspiration for dreamers. Your decisions allowed both you and the free crusaders to follow the path of goodness and freedom. Lovers and poets would go there to watch the moon rise through the sparkling waterfalls, or to catch the reflections of the stars in the streams. The free crusaders did not stay together for long. Their main goal had been achieved, but there were still plenty of places left in the world where injustice was rampant, where courage and imagination were needed. Scarento and his friends had their branches full, they had to take care of the new rapidly growing forest. <laughs> Stop, cats! <laughs> I can't even read. Oh, the cat is in my, my lap here, like doing the little thing. <laughs> oh god. Skeleton during his time as a free crusader came to understand and even love city customs in his own way. He often dropped it by Dresden and even officially adopted all of the teenagers from the commander's court, and he cared for them just as selflessly as if they were his own trees. The fate of the Mimic Crusaders was most astonishing of all. They formed their own knightly order, then changed their mind and decided to become pirates, then settled on being pirate knight acrobats. <laughs> what? They sailed the seas on a massive ship, quite possibly another Mimic, singing shanties, juggling cutlasses, saving beautiful damsels, and on rare occasions boarding someone they didn't like. Ivo. Inconsolable after losing her best friend was taken from the ruins of Threshold by the Free Crusaders. Before long, a group of Azatas arrived to return the dragon to Elysium. Much later, all grown up, Ivo went off on her adventures. She traveled the plains, bravely helping good souls in distress, and of course seeking out places where they baked the best cookies. Although the commander had became the symbol of the Fifth Crusade, there were still those among the Crusaders who were dissatisfied with these decisions. Your achievements in the Crusade areas of leadership, logistics, and military are not especially impressive. What? It's just because I didn't get the maximum of the of logistics. Years later, their words served as the basis for many alternate versions of the history of the struggle against the wood wound. Due to the success of the commander's diplomatic strategy, you achieved success in diplomacy. 
By the end of the war, Mendev's true political center was Dresden, not in Erosium, after gaining the support of foreign rulers and finding allies in the capital. Dresden became the shining example of the new Mendev, one that was nurtured by the commander's ideas. The significance and accomplishments of the crusade were so great that even a century after the end of the war, Dresden retained its prominence on the map of Aviston. The commander's diplomatic, military and administrative talents turned the fortress into a key political player. Queen Goffrey returned to Nerosium with the intent to rule Mendev as before, but as it turned out, Mendevian society was hungry for change. The war of ravaged nation desired new leadership, but the queen would not count countenance yielding her authority to anyone else. She believed her duty to her homeland had not yet been fulfilled. The wood stones from the chain that once guarded the borders of Mendev were carefully disassembled. You free the angels trapped inside the wood stones. One by one, the angels that had been trapped inside returned to heaven to heal their wounded spears and prepare for new battles against evil. The victory over the wood wound changed many things, not just Gungular, but in the Midnight Isles as well. Nauticlus spent many days pondering the words of a certain young and fearless prophet. <laughs> you and Amber managed to influence not Nauticlus, this is great. Before long, the Lady in Shadow openly renounced her realm and named herself Redeemer Queen, really? This revolt against her own demonic nature transformed Nauticula, severed her ties to the Abyss and brought her to Elysium. There, upon creating a realm named, named Midnight's Palette, the Redeemer Queen attained divine power and became the patroness of exiles. The now vacant throne was instantly seized by Shamira the Ardent Dream, however, her power could not compare to the might of the Lady in Shadow. God damn it. The Midnight Isles, which had become a tempting prize for many demons, were plunged into chaos. The demon lord Baphomet suffered a defeat. The wood wound was closed in the convenient passage to Galarion and sealed along with it. Baphomet shifted his attention to the realms of the other demon lords. <laughs> Look at the cat's tail here. <laughs> As several of the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth were soon discovered in Elushnirur. The demon lord Descari suffered a defeat. He bided his time, continuing to plot his venture of Galarion. And after that, of heaven itself, the cultists that remained on Galario went mad one after another, tortured by the nightmarish dreams their lord sent to them. Now alone, Irbeth lost her life in ease. Anivia left quietly unnoticed, leaving no traces, uh, no notes or traces. No one ever saw her again. Several hundred years after the conclusion of the Fifth Crusade, somewhere on another plane, far from both the Abyss and Galarian, two runaway Lilithus met. You gave Minago and Chivaro another chance. Minago and Chivaro. They met, never to part again. Yeah, I gave them. Yeah, that's great. The Hand of the Inheritor, who had gone into voluntary exile, you succeed in healing the hand of the inheritor of Baphomet's corruption, spent much time among mortals trying to gain a better understanding of their fecal nature. Somewhere on the roads of Galarion, the angel's trail went cold. Rumor has it that they, he intentionally went into hiding to avoid both old friends and surviving enemies, that he now lives somewhere in the guise of a callow mortal youth eager to absorb other people's wisdom. Having rediscovered his own history, Story. The storyteller rejected the goddess's proposal. Thanks to you, the storyteller story in his memory and chose his own path, refusing to become Faraz Mazushir. He was celebrated as a great historian and rightfully held the position of Dean of the History Faculty of the Arcana Miriam, most renowned academy in Absalom. Another 40 years passed before his age caught up with him and it was his turn to appear before the Lady of Graves. Finian, a pathfinder who also happened to be a talking weapon, Continuing his travels in the hands of many warriors, seasoned and otherwise, you convince Finian to accept his life as a sentient weapon. Yeah. Throughout the following centuries, he was lost in battle on a number of occasions, only to be found again in some fantastical treasure room on the other side of Galarium. Once again, Scylla heard the call of the open road. Uh, even after gaining mythic powers and coming face to face with the goddess and demon lords, she never stopped being a paladin and a wandering knight whose purpose was to help others. You helped Scylla to overcome her problems and help all her friends. This strengthened Scylla's faith in herself and other people. Having properly fulfilled his duty to the mangroves and his, to his surprise about the death, Lan was suddenly faced with a choice what to do with his life now that it wasn't going to end anytime soon. His hesitation did not last long. You helped Lan believe that you trust him. And just a few months later, he went on a sea voyage to see the world he had saved. 
Amber joined the Redeemed Brotherhood. She never recognized herself as their leader or gave any orders, but have her presence inspired the former miscreants to perform great deeds. Your joint adventures convinced Amber to keep believing the inheritance inherent goodness of people and not only people. Over time, the Brotherhood grew into a major religious movement. Its preachers took a vow to poverty and walked the roads of glory, helping the needy, convincing villains to change their ways and treating both good and evil deities alike to be more merciful to mortal kind. Soon after the war, the tireless researcher of all things was searchable embarked on a new journey. She had a sudden urge to know how much time it would take to visit every nation on <laughs> <Get. laughs> Galarium. She returned after a year and a half with a pile of notes, which she promptly handed over to her assistant. After all, someone had to help her compile her entries for the first volume of the Encyclopedia Galarionica. It only made sense for her assistant to help, given that one of the entries was dedicated to him. You helped Nenio and managed to become her friend, and you even persuaded her to remember that fact. Remember the three crusaders who had made Galarian in history. Shortly after the conclusion of the fifth crusade, Dairon Arondai's body was discovered at one of his estates. He failed to gain Dairon's trust and did not pay enough attention to his goals and programs. Oh shit. His head was missing and any attempts to find it proved futile. To his own surprise, Wojif Jephto became a war hero. His team and fame were short, shortly followed by great wealth. The Tiefling did not let his newfound fortune turn his head, but chose to invest the money in several profitable ventures and one charity to, for street urchins. Within a few years, his signature style came to include a top hat, a cane, and a bit of a belly. Oh. You kept Wojif from embracing his demonic legacy and proved that you can rely that he can rely on you. After the victory, Sozia returned home together with his brother. You convinced Sozia that his brother is a victim of circumstance. Now a famed crusader hero, he humbly officiated at a temple of Shelley, painted grew sweet-smelling fruits and made the best wine in the region. His kindly, uh, his kindly smile faded only when people asked him to recount his experiences in the war. He would not deny them, but he would speak without embellishment, so that not a single listener would feel tempted to pick up a sword and leave in search for a hero's glory. When he turned home, Trevor restored the shield of Shelling to its place in the church and swore never to pick up a weapon again. He tried to discover his wood carving skills, but his wounded hands betrayed him, no longer willing to create beauty. The tormented fighter lived a quiet, peaceful life helping his brother with his vineyard, all the while trying in vain to forget the horrors of the abyss. Raju Durange wrote a treatise on waging war against demons, with a practical manual and a philosophical exhortation. And once that was done, he succumbed to the bleaching completely. He was posthumously uh, reinstated in his order and buried with honors in the office's cemetery. You were in Reggie's respect, both as a person and as a commander. His treatise was used in all future wars against the abyss by mortals, angels, and devils alike. Devils. The world changed Greybor. You convinced Greybor to return to his family. He left the assassin's craft behind and embarked on a search for his family. It took years to win their love again, but he had never uh, been one to back down from a fight, and so he won that battle as well. Greybor hung his axes above the fireplace and became an upstanding citizen. The transformation was difficult for him, and many a time he would reminisce about the days of his daring youth. Still, there was one joying family life that the dwarf would not have dreaded for anything in the world, his daughter Mora. She grew up to be an exceptional warrior, and watching her train brought Greybor true happiness. Oh. Urshel had changed her nature, completely ridding herself of evil, but she would not dare to live among mortals. She took up residence in a small house away from their settlements. Shortly afterwards, rumors began to spread. Some said there was a kind sorceress living in the cottage, or perhaps a, a, a reclu rec reclusive saint, and people would come to her asking for help. She never refused anyone, and in time she earned their trust and friendship. With each year, she spent more and more time in the dream world. The wondrous dreams where her beloved was alive came to replace personal interactions with living folk. Uh, she still helped those who came to her, but the chances of finding her at home grew smaller and smaller.
was defeated. The victor spared my life in a gesture that was not quite a boon, not quite charity. I was left without hope, without a chance of finding a purpose again. I lived out my remaining days in an isolated cottage, far from everyone, needed by none, discovered by none. I have recounted the story of my life for you, Verasma Lady. Oh! Not only of my cool. life, but of the commanders also. I believe the tale of such an illustrious figure would pique even a goddess's curiosity. Silence hangs over the boneyard. The Lady of Grace is weighing her decision, and it seems the entire universe is holding its breath, awaiting their pronouncement. Who would dare to break a silence so absolute? Intervene, of course. Your consciousness, your consciousness coalesces into one whole, rejecting the oblivion of death. Your mythic powers are not entirely gone, and they entitle you to, to a say in this trial. So, I don't have... Oh, okay, I have from Dyer, I apparently I learned stuff. 26, 39, 39. I appeal to your mercy. The planes have the planes have suffered enough. Do not add to the evil already wrought with this with yet another act of evil. Your words ring out in the silence. They are heard, considered and given their due weight. Fucking hell, man. This is awesome. Look at that. You wrought great evil. While it stems from the evil that was done to you, your actions far exceeded it. Your soul is dark, and there is only one place for you in the universe. And yet, the one whom you harmed most of all now appeals to me on your behalf. And you will be remembered as long as this universe exists. You have earned your keep. This is so cool. Oh, God.